Thanks for joining St. George News at 8. I'm Scott Beadle. University of Utah officials weighed in on the controversial arrest of a nurse there. Alex Wubbles was arrested after refusing to allow a blood draw from an unconscious patient. Video of her arrest was released Thursday and quickly went viral, drawing outrage and apologies from Salt Lake City's mayor and police chief. University leaders held a press conference to address the controversy. I feel a sense of urgency for this conversation. We need to we need to make this better. This this can't be happening. It should never have happened. And it and if I have anything to say about it, it won't ever happen again. Okay. No, we're yeah, done. No, we're no. we're yeah. done. You're under arrest. Yeah. We're going. Under we're done. Arrest, <laughs> Two officers involved in the situation are on paid leave while that incident is being investigated. A 38-year-old man has died from a rappelling accident in southern Utah. Around 11 Sunday morning, officials got a report that someone had fallen while rappelling in Inglestead Hollow, east of Zion National Park. The Kane County Sheriff's Office says a New Hampshire man was hiking with four siblings in an area that includes a series of rappels. The family was on the first rappel when the man fell the last 80 feet into the canyon. Trees in that area hindered initial landings by helicopter rescue crews. By the time rescuers could get to the man, he had passed away. This is the second incident of its kind in that area in less than two weeks. Afraid you're being left behind in the tech revolution? An event this Wednesday is designed to change that. The St. George Chamber of Commerce is teaming up with Clint Betts, executive director of Silicon Slopes, for what the city has planned for Tech Ridge. Tech Ridge is to be an economically and socially vibrant area in what is now the Ridgetop Complex. The plan is to combine educational facilities, tech companies, professional businesses, recreation, and homes all in one place. Wednesday's, Wednesday's luncheon will be at the Courtyard by Marriott at 1130. Tickets are $15 for chamber members and $20 for non-members. Now to the growing global threat from North Korea. The rogue nation is claiming a successful test of a hydrogen bomb. The UN Security Council has called another emergency meeting, and the Trump administration is upping the pressure on China. Emily Rao reports. The stakes could not be higher. The urgency is now. U.S. Ambassador to the UN Nikki Haley saying enough is enough. This after the latest and most powerful nuclear test yet from North Korea, a test launch of a hydrogen bomb triggering a major earthquake, and a U.S. intelligence official telling ABC News there is high confidence the North Koreans tested an advanced nuclear device. Yesterday we saw the demonstration of a thermonuclear device, so any kind of a preventive attack, military attack on the North could involve eventually the exchange of thermonuclear weapons. President Trump speaking with the South Korean president Monday morning about next steps. The president also tweeting, the U.S. is considering stopping all trade with any country doing business with North Korea. Ambassador Haley echoing that warning. The United States will look at every country that does business with North Korea as a country that is giving aid to their reckless and dangerous nuclear intentions. The threat not sitting well with China, North Korea's biggest trading partner and only major ally. China's foreign ministry spokesman calling it, quote, unacceptable, neither objective nor fair. But President Trump leaving all options on the table. Mr. President, will you attack North Korea? China has a lot to lose if President Trump were to move forward with that trade threat. There would be a substantial financial impact. U.S. imports Chinese goods worth about $40 billion each month. Now to the destruction caused by Harvey. Texas Governor Greg Abbott suggests damage may reach $180 billion. The Trump administration has asked Congress to approve a $7.85 billion aid package as part of an initial response to help storm victims. But the White House tied that relief money to raising the debt limit. Congress is expected to take up both issues this week. And driving home this Labor Day is more expensive. Gas prices are way up. Gas Buddy says the average price for a gallon of regular unleaded is now $2.63. That's nearly 27 higher than the week before. Refinery closings and the temporary stoppage of oil drilling in the Gulf of Mexico in the wake of Hurricane Harvey are mostly to blame for that gas hike. Chief Meteorologist Chris Summers has your Southern Utah forecast coming up right after this.
update to us. A hot one out there once again today. 104, the high temperature here in St. George. We did see a few showers and thunderstorms around the area as well. Mostly activity around Santa Clara, just to our north and west, seeing some heavy showers and thunderstorms as they continue to make their way through parts of southern Utah. Latest radar and satellite again showing some of those showers and thunderstorms. There it is, just, just to the west and northwest of St. George, seeing some of those showers and thunderstorms. Seeing a few more, a little shower activity up around Cedar City as well, keeping a chance of some rain even around northwestern Arizona as well for the next couple of days. Going to keep the threat of rain in our forecast, at least on isolated basis here the next couple of days, but then some cooler temperatures arrive. We're talking temperatures back in the 90s at least, maybe even looking at temperatures close to the low 90s by the time we get to the end of our work week. So we'll see mostly sunny skies again, staying very warm for your Tuesday. An isolated shower or thunderstorm. Looks like the best chance will be in some of the higher elevations. Again, around Cedar City pricing, a better chance of some showers and thunderstorms on your Tuesday. We do remain warm moving through Wednesday before we see a better chance of rain moving into southern Utah by the middle part and parts of the work week. And that's where you should really see temperatures take a little tumble. We'll at least get back in the low 90s by the time we get to the end of the work week, and that could last into the upcoming weekend as well. Here's your highs from today. 104 down in Vegas and Mesquite. 104 Hurricane. 93 in Cedar City. 92 degrees of high temperature enterprise and we saw a high of 104 here today in St. George. And for tonight against some showers or thunderstorms around the area. 56 degrees. The overnight low in Cedar City. Low to mid 70s from St. George to Mesquite to Hurricane. Again seeing that chance of some rain in our area. Now for Cedar City as we go through your Tuesday we'll see some sunshine return. Again, some isolated showers with thunderstorms are possible. 94 degrees of high temperature around St. George and Southern Utah near 103 for the high temperature. But again, some isolated showers or thunderstorms are definitely in our forecast as we head into our Tuesday afternoon. Here's what it looks like then. There's those showers and thunderstorms. The area in green here actually making its way back up into parts of northwestern Arizona. Wouldn't be surprised to see a few of those try to make it here in Southern Utah. Otherwise, it's going to just stay hot and dry for at least one more day. But again, some cooler temperatures are back in the forecast for the middle parts and end parts of our week work week. Here we go for Tuesday, 94 degrees of high Cedar City and Enterprise, mostly sunny skies around St. George and Southern Utah, even back in the parts of Nevada, seeing a high temperature of 105 in Mesquite, 103 in St. George, mostly sunny and very humid or very warm, I should say, as we head into our Tuesday afternoon. And here's a seven day forecast for Cedar City. Some chances of rain return Wednesday, 89. And look at those temperatures by the weekend. Another chance of rain around probably Friday, Saturday, but low 80s. You're looking for a high temperature of 80 by Saturday in Cedar City and even looking pretty good in St. George too. Again, a little bit of rain moving through maybe by Wednesday, Thursday, and even by Friday, that chance of rain and had to put an upper 80s back in the board on Saturday with some rain chances. Definitely seeing some cooler temperatures arriving and looking actually pretty good. Once we get through tomorrow, we'll be in 103 tomorrow. After that, we're staying in the double digits for the rest of the work week and into the weekend. So that's always some good news here as we mm -hmm. get to the first real full full week of September. Yeah, I mean, Labor Day is the unofficial end of summer. Right. So it looks like we're maybe a <laughs> day or two slow yeah, there. Mother but kind of, yeah, Mother down. Nature's kind of playing with that and saying, okay, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll keep it around one more day, but then some nice cool weather returns, upper 80s by the weekend. Yeah, that's all right. We like that. Thanks, Chris. Mm -hmm. you might just raise a glass to this next man as he goes for a world record. Details when we come back. In Germany, they take their beer very seriously. So seriously, you can win world records just by carrying it. If you can carry over 29 beer jugs 130 feet and set them down without spilling more than 10% of the beer. That is exactly what Oliver Strumpfell managed to do yesterday, beating his own world record. Strumpfell says he trained at the gym three to four times a week since February. Thirsty work indeed, and probably pretty deserving of a beer himself. Yeah, well, you have to drink all those when you get done with it? I imagine you probably do. Someone does. I mean, not yeah, you, I, but... I think I saw elsewhere that's about 150 pounds of oh, wow. beer and mugs right there. So Wow. Uh, that's, that's pretty, pretty, pretty impressive. Good, yeah, pretty good feet there to, to walk it down that far. Mm -hmm. and, and not spill. And not spill any. That's good. He'd be mm -hmm. make a good waitress or a good waiter. I would say so. <laughs> well, thanks for watching. We hope you have a great night.